Have you ever wondered how a chemist estimates substances in solution? Weren't you curious to know how much acetic acid is there in the bottle of vinegar in your kitchen? Didn't you wonder why your soap didn't lather even while you were scrubbing away with it? In this laboratory program, we would be exposing you to techniques which can be used to find answers to many of these questions. While you go through the program, you will realize how important practical work is to the learning of chemistry. For estimating substances in solution by volumetric analysis, we can use either titrometric or instrumental methods. In titrometry, we titrate the unknown solution of which we want to find the strength with a standard solution of known strength. Therefore, making a standard solution is the first step in titrometry. For making a standard solution, we weigh the pure solute accurately, dissolve it in an appropriate solvent, and then make the solution up to a specific volume. For weighing substances accurately, we use an analytical balance. A balance like this can weigh accurately up to 5,000 of a gram. Let us first see what are the essential parts of an analytical balance. As you can see, this balance is kept in a glass case. This helps to protect the balance from air currents, dust, and moisture. These leveling screws help to make the balance level. And the plumb line here enables us to judge whether the balance is level. The most important part of the balance is this graduated beam with a gate knife edges on both ends. It is mounted on an agate prism here. These screws are used for adjusting the effective weight of the pans. The end knife edges support these stirrups from which the pans are suspended. From the center of the beam, there is this long pointer which swings on that scale. This is a movable brass nut called the gravity nut. By raising it, the swing of the pointer can be increased. Therefore, it is used for adjusting the sensitivity of the balance. Over the beam, this is the sliding lever with a hook to manipulate the rider. As we shall show you later, the rider is used for taking weights smaller than 10 milligrams. Before we do the actual weighing, we must check the balance. For this, we level the balance with the help of these leveling screws and then check it with the help of the plumb line. When the balance is in level, the two pointed tips of the plumb line will coincide. After this, we should not move the balance from this position at all. Sometimes it is possible that the stirrups are not sitting properly on the knife edge, like in this case. If this is so, we should carefully adjust them. After that, we shut all the windows. Now we raise the beam gently by turning the arrest key in the clockwise direction. 
and watch the swings of the pointer. As you can see, it is pointing more towards the right hand side. That means the right hand pan is lighter and the left hand pan is heavier. So we'll move this nut here Again try. This time let us see what happens. Still a little difference. Let's try once again. This time, the pointer is swinging equally on both sides. So the two pans are balanced. We lower the beam. The balance is ready for weighing. Now let's have a look at the weight box. This is the forceps. And these are the gram weights from 100 grams right down to 1 gram and the fractional weights from 500 milligrams right down to 10 milligrams. And this is the rider which we use for taking weights less than 10 milligrams. Before we do the actual weighing, we must know how much of the salute to take to prepare a certain volume of a standard solution of a particular strength. Suppose we want to make 250 cc of M by 50 ferrous ammonium sulfate solution. You know, the molar mass of ferrous ammonium sulfate is 392.16 grams. It means that if we want to prepare one cubic decimeter of M by 50 ferrous ammonium sulfate solution, we have to take 392.16 divided by 50 grams of the salt. And for 250 cc of the solution, it would have to be further divided by 4. That means 1.9608 grams of ferrous ammonium sulfate. A weighing bottle like this is used for weighing solid substances. I am transferring about two grams of ferrous ammonium sulfate into this bottle and take its approximate mass. The weighing bottle along with the salt weighs about 19.5 grams on the rough balance. Then I'll take its accurate mass on the analytical balance. Remember, the weighing bottle must always be put on the left hand side pan and the weights on the right hand side pan. Now I will put 19.5 gram weights on the right hand side pan.
two more precautions about handling the weights and the analytical balance. The weights must never be touched by hand and nothing should be added to the pan or removed from it until the balance is made to rest. Before starting the weighing, the side windows must be closed. Now I turn the knob to raise the beam. As you can see, 19.5 gram weights are too heavy. So I change over to 19.4. Still heavy. This time, let us see what happens. 19.3 is also heavy. I take away the 100 milligram weight and put 50 milligram weight instead. It's still heavy. Let's make it 40. Forty is a little heavy, so I'll make it thirty. As you can see, 30 is a little too light, but since we would not like to use weights less than 10 milligrams, we would have to use a rider here. We put the rider on the hook. Now with the help of the sliding lever, I will put the rider on the right hand side of the graduated beam right in the middle, say on division 5. The right hand side is lighter. I will move the rider a little bit. Still not balanced. Now it is swinging equally on both sides. It is balanced. Let us see what the mass of the bottle along with ferrous ammonium sulfate is. We take out the gram weights from the pan and put them in the weight box. As we do so, we note down each weight. This is to avoid any error in recording. 
So I take out a 10 grams. Then I take out 5 gram weight. Two gram, the other two gram, two hundred milligram, twenty milligram, ten milligram. Let us now see about the rider. As you can see, it is divided into ten large divisions on the right hand side and ten large divisions on the left hand side with zero in the middle. Each of these large divisions is further divided into five small divisions. When the rider is on the tenth division, its weight is 10 milligrams. As you can see now, the rider is on 6.4 divisions. So its weight would be 6 milligrams plus each small division is equal to 0.2 milligrams, so it would be 6.8 milligrams. We add this to the weights we have already recorded and then add everything up. Mass of the bottle and the salt now then adds up to 19.8 two, three, six, eight grams. Now I will transfer the salt into the volumetric flask. I'll weigh the bottle again. The mass of the bottle after transferring the salt is 17.2500 grams. The difference of the two masses gives the mass of the salt that has been transferred into the measuring flask. That is 1.9868 grams. This method of weighing is called weighing by difference. While weighing, we must observe few precautions. One is weigh the bottle second time immediately after transferring the salt into the volumetric flask. Then it is better to go from larger weights to smaller ones sequentially. And of course we must always raise the beam very gently to avoid jerks which can disturb the setting of the balance. Now let's make the solution. We'll first add about 50 cc of distilled water to the volumetric flask. And now we add about 10 cc of dilute sulfuric acid to the volumetric flask and shake the contents 
like this. Till the salt is completely dissolved. I think it is dissolved. Now I am adding distilled water. Again shake the contents of the flask. Let's see, bring the level of the solution up to here. I think we've added enough distilled water to wash off all parasomonium sulfate into the volumetric flask so we can remove the funnel. Now I think you can see this mark here. That means that when the volumetric flask is filled up to this level, the volume of the solution in the volumetric flask would be 250 cc. Now I will add distilled water with a dropper. The last drops have to be added very, very carefully. The low meniscus must touch the mark. This needs just one or two drops more. There. Now I'll stopper the volumetric flask and shake the solution thoroughly to make it homogeneous. There the solution is made. In case you happen to add a little more water than comes up to this mark, the solution has to be rejected and you have to start all over again. Also, while making the solution, if it turns brown, it means enough sulfuric acid has not been added. So again it has to be rejected and we have to start afresh, add more sulfuric acid. Now let us see what the molarity of this solution is, you see, if we had added 1.9608 grams of ferrosomonium sulfate and dissolved it in 250 cc of the solution, we would have got a solution of molarity M by 50. In this case, we have added 1.9868 grams of parasomonium sulfate in 250 cc of the solution, the molarity of the solution now would be M by 50 multiplied by 1.9868 divided by 1.9608 which comes to M by 49.34. So here we have got 250 cc of ferrous ammonium sulfate solution of molarity M by 49.34.